Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. We welcome you to a brand new day, a very wonderful day that the Lord has made for us. The 14th day in the month of May in the year 2021. We well, welcome to this glorious day and we pray that the Lord who brought us into this day will bless us. And as we begin this day in his presence, it's our prayer that his presence will carry us through to the end of this day in Jesus' name. Therefore, we call on you to join us in the Daily Fountain devotional, the devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, as we reflect and meditate on the Word of God. Let us pray. Our dear God and Father, we give you hearty thanks and praise for your goodness, your love, your mercy upon us. You preserved us through the night. You protected us. You preserved us. You kept us. And we are witnesses of this day. A very wonderful day. A blessed day. We return all glory to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we go through your word in the Daily Fountain devotional, we pray that you will open our hearts. We pray that you will open our minds. We pray that you will grant us understanding. And we pray that you will give us a spirit of obedience to your command. That through this word, we will gain directions and corrections where necessary. To the glory and to the honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, you're welcome to this wonderful day. For our Daily Fountain devotional this morning, we'll be looking at a topic that says, Beware of stumbling blocks. Beware of stumbling blocks. I'll be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 23 to 29. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 23 to 29. Then I pleaded with the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth, who can do anything like your works and your mighty deeds? I pray, let me cross over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, those pleasant mountains and Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not listen to me. So the Lord said to me, enough of that. Speak no more to me of this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and lift your eyes towards the west, the north, the south, and the east. Behold, it, is with your, behold it with your eyes, for you shall not cross over this Jordan. But command Joshua, and encourage him, and strengthen him, for he shall go over before these people, and he will cause them to inherit the land which you will see. So we stayed in the valley opposite Beth Poir. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. As pointed earlier, our topic this morning says, Beware of stumbling blocks. The topic before sounds more like a warning. It sounds more like a caution to take heed, to consider our ways, and to be conscious of things that will act as stumbling blocks against us attaining our eternal destiny. It says beware. And whenever the word beware is used, it implies being careful about something or someone. And such things are things that can deny one of certain privileges, rights, or opportunities set by God for such person. It means to be cautious and to be alert of risk and dangers, things that can be detrimental to the life and well-being of somebody. 
And the fact remains that anyone who ignores the discussion sign is bound to face the impending doom or danger that comes with it. And practical examples of this caution sign are the traffic signs we have on the road. You can see a sign pointing you to a sharp bend, a narrow bridge, a speed bump. And when you ignore such signs, you fall into danger. And the accident might be so fatal and unbearable. And we can also see caution signs in houses where people own dogs, they will write at their gates or the entrance to the house, beware of dogs. And a friend of mine once ignored such signs in a compound, and he was nearly torn apart by dogs, except for the intervention of the security man of that compound. So our topic says, beware of stumbling blocks. It is a call to be cautious of things that can hinder us from getting into where God wants us to be. It is a call to be cautious of situations, circumstances, our actions and inactions, and our reactions and responses to situations around us that may hinder us from getting into the eternal rest the Lord has set for us. And so this passage is a narrative, a pathetic narrative, and a sorrowful experience of our, our brother Moses, a high-profile leader of God's people. In fact, God talked about him as a man who he discusses with face to face, as though a man converses with his friend. And the most disturbing and lamentable aspect of this is what Moses said in verse 26 of the Bible. He said, but because of you, the Lord was angry with me and would not listen to me. What led to God denying Moses this promised land? Number one, as we can see in Numbers chapter 20, verse 9 to verse 12, is the sin of the people. The Bible described Israel as a stiff-necked people, a very stubborn people. And as a result of this stubbornness, they were placing demands on Moses. And these demands became so unbearable. In one of such instances in Numbers chapter 20, verse 9 to 12, they requested for water to drink. Moses was so annoyed. He saw them as adults, matured people who should take care of themselves. But from time to time, they kept calling on him to attend to their needs. And at this time, God told Moses, take your staff and speak to the rock. As a result of this sin, Moses became angry. And that's the second thing that led Moses to missing the promised land. He became angry. Anger. Anger spurred him to disobeying the command of God. God said, speak to the rock. And Moses struck the rock, not just once, but twice. And he yelled on the people to behold the water they wanted. Now, this act made a high-profile leader like Moses to lose entrance to the kingdom promised by God. Brethren, let us pause. Take a deep breath and reflect over this. Moses, a man who had a very special revelation of God, Moses, a man who even saw the form of God on Mount Horeb. Moses, a man whom God spoke of in Numbers chapter 12 from verse 6 to 8, it says, Hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in vision. I speak to him in a dream, but not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. What a wonderful testimony about Moses by God. But this same Moses failed because of the sin of the people, because of anger, and because of disobedience. Let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. 
One major challenge in leadership or even in living the Christian life is how to relate with people. Three categories of people. People of the same level with you. People who are lower than you. And people who are above you. How you relate with, it, with these people will determine how far you can go as a leader, especially in the church of God and in our secular leadership as believers. It has been a major stumbling block to many Christians and many leaders. And we need to be cautious of this so that we don't fall as a result of all this. The ability to handle these levels of relationship in humility and patience speaks volume about the maturity of Christian leaders. It speaks volume about your level of maturity as a Christian leader. And when we are talking about Christian leaders here, please, we are not just referring to pastors, to clergymen or bishop. We are talking to leaders at different levels who profess that they are Christians. You can be a father, you are a leader in your family. A mother, you are a leader in your family. You're working in different places, you are a leader over the people serving under you. How do you view them? How do you relate with them? It will go a long way in determining your success, both in secular and spiritual matters. We should not allow people or the service we render to God and humanity to become a stumbling block to our success. Moses did, and he couldn't get to the promised land. Moses did, and he lost his opportunity. Moses did, and at this point he was begging God and God had to rebuke him. As Christians, we need to be aware of these stumbling blocks. In the time of Moses, it was a denial of entrance into the promised land. Today as Christians, we have a target. And our target is making eternity at the end of this life. What shall it profit us if after all the sufferings of this age, we can't enjoy this eternity in the kingdom of God because of these stumbling blocks? What gain will it be to us? We need to look in words. We need to look into our emotions. We need to look into the way we respond to situations. We need to look into the way we react to people. We need to look into the way we treat others around us. These are some of the little, little things that can deny us access to God's kingdom. And it's my prayer that we'll run this race, we'll finish well, and we'll wear the crown that the Lord has set for us. Let us also note something from this text. Moses was directed by God to commission, encourage, and strengthen Joshua to take over the mantle of leadership from him. As leaders, as a leader, are you working hard to raise a replacement for yourself? By the time you get away from the scene, will there be somebody who can stand in and represent you? It's another challenge we need to take up. Our replacement speaks volume about our achievements. They are more or less like our legacy that we left behind after our struggles in this life. And it's my prayer that God will grant us the grace to raise worthy replacements for ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our dear God and Father, we thank you for your word this morning. You've spoken to us about stumbling blocks to our Christian race here in this world. And it's our prayer, dear God and Father, that you will grant us the grace to beware of these stumbling blocks. Let your spirit dwell in us to enable us to overcome the challenges of this race so that at the end we will be able to stand before you 
as worthy Christians who have run the race with faith, who have kept the faith, and who have been able to finish well, awaiting the reward that comes from you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And just as Moses, may you grant us the grace to raise worthy representatives who will stand in when we are no longer there. We thank you because we trust you will grant this for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.